Tonight, in the second of two reports from correspondent David Browning, the astronauts of Apollo 11 tell us what it felt like, as only they can. Altitude 1600. Eagle looking great. It is so easy 20 years later, so very easy, to remember the awe and the mystery of that moment as a world watched and waited. 540 feet. Michael Collins felt it, listening in on the landing from his command ship, 60 miles above the moon. Altitude, velocity, light. Starting with the uh, the Wright brothers, the uh, Jaeger through the sound barrier, uh, Armstrong and Aldrin on the moon. It's in our tradition, it's in our culture. Peering out at the austere lunar landscape, Buzz Aldrin felt it. I think it'd be a great understatement to say that it was the most significant event that happened in my life. 60 seconds. And Neil Armstrong felt it too. The touchdown itself, from my point of view, was a real high in terms of elation. Not so much for the instant, but because it marked the achievement that a third of a million people had been working for a decade to accomplish. Man on the moon. And soon, Good Neil Armstrong's step that would change now. history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong says now, right, those real famous real. words came to him and only after they'd landed on the moon. Known, uh, like it was a statement that was natural in the sense of the time. It was a, a step and a step, and I uh, thought about it uh, really after we got there. No small step for Buzz Aldrin. He jumped. There you go. Not squishy. It's bouncy. Oh, Mike, really is. Got the, the velvet the black sky horizon curving away. After 21 hours, they lifted off. All along, Mike Collins, orbiting in the command ship, had feared the worst. That Aldrin and Armstrong might not make it, might be lost in space. Collins. The one that I mistrusted the most was the rendezvous part, bringing this ungainly looking critter back up from the surface of the moon successfully. But they look to Collins rock solid. He remembers saying to himself, Jesus, we really are going to carry this thing on. They did, of course, and they came home to a challenge in some ways more difficult than what they'd just been through. What do you do after you've been to the moon? Buzz Aldrin. Each person has their own insecurities and their own frailties, and I've managed to succeed in everything that I did, but that didn't bring comfort along with it. It, it brought growing dis-ease. On Earth, Buzz Aldrin lost his way. For several years, there was depression, heavy drinking, but he conquered all that, too. More than half of the years since uh, Apollo 11, uh, I've spent as a sober, recovering uh, alcoholic. And this has given me an ability to socialize with people that uh, used to frighten me to death uh, years, uh, years ago. Neil Armstrong has stayed out of the public eye as much as possible. He has taught engineering at the University of Cincinnati and turned down all book offers. Mike Collins ran the country's Air and Space Museum for a time. He and Aldrin both write, arguing that American space policy has drifted far too long, that it's time to head back to the moon and to Mars. Perhaps, says Collins, a new generation will recapture the enthusiasm of those days 20 years ago. We Roger we copy, stand by please. Buzz Aldrin hopes so too. He has his first grandson. And already thinks the boy looks like maybe he might have the right stop. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. That's the CBS Evening News. I'm Charles Carroll. Dan Rather will be back tomorrow. Good night. Travel on the line. Same type, we're go, flight. Okay, we're go. We're go, same type, we're go. Altitude 1600. Eagle looking great. Roger 1202, we copy it. 35 degrees, 750, coming down to 23. 540 feet and a 15. 150 feet down at 4. Altitude, velocity, light. In and down. 220 feet.